Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. Let's talk about bass management, actually. This is like one of those basic topics. And sometimes I forget that those basic topics are actually not fully understood by everybody. So I, I picked on one of my clients and he wrote me, he's like, I'm glad I made it into your video. And I, I hope I didn't make you feel bad. But uh, when we had set up his system, he was having some issues and he was telling me how it didn't sound good. And when we jumped into the calibration, um, based on his description, I had a suspicion this was going on, that the bass management part of it had never really been set up. And so what was happening is speakers that didn't have the dynamic range and bandwidth to be able to get a full range signal were in fact getting a full range signal. So of course it didn't sound good. So I want to talk about it now. I think, again, I've addressed it before, but I want to talk about it a little bit differently. So um, the history of bass management is that it was long understood that the majority of speakers just don't have, it's not just bandwidth, it's that they can't play loud enough at those low frequencies. So it's the bandwidth and dynamic range piece put together in one. And it was recognized that there was a couple things. One, that we should have a dedicated low frequency effect channel to send all those bangs and rumbles and booms to. But also that we should take the load off of the left center right surround speakers, left center right and surround speakers, I should say, and put that to this dedicated subwoofer that's more capable of handling it, including that you can always have two or three or four. And this was done in commercial cinemas and it was done in, in the residential systems. But it really made the absolute most sense with residential. Because with commercial, you could always just add bigger woofer modules to the left, center, right speakers. The surrounds always had this problem too. And so base managing surrounds was a you know common concern, except for that back in the early, early days, there was no low frequency content being sent to surrounds. It was already bandwidth limited in the first place. It was sort of like base management had been done in the recording, except for not for the left, center, and right. Um, in the homes, the speakers you use are obviously way smaller. So THX had adopted this notion that if you set the crossover point at 80 hertz and the speaker has, this was the old idea, but I've talked to some of the manufacturers that do THX now, and they basically told me, we don't follow that. It's not part of the current standard. But the original approach that I recall was that THX said, if the speaker has a minus 3 dB, it's a sealed, it's got to be a sealed box. That was a requirement back then. And I actually agree with this general idea. If it has minus 3 dB at 80 hertz, if you then apply a second order Butterworth high pass filter, the acoustic roll off and the electronic roll off that you get combines to create a fourth order Linkwitz Riley. Because that's what a Linkwitz Riley, for those who don't know, that's what a Linkwitz Riley filter is. It's paralleled, it's basically, well, not paralleled, it's series. It's, there's two second order Butterworth filters and they combine to create a fourth order and you get minus 3 dB at the crossover point, which ends up summing flat and it has a smooth phase response through there. That was the whole key. And then on the subwoofer, it's not going to have that natural roll off. So on that one, you actually do a fourth order Linkwitz Riley low pass. So one gets a Butterworth high pass, the other gets a Linkwitz Riley low pass. And they sum to, to get the response you want. Now, whether that happens in real life is another story, including, as I said, most modern manufacturers have fully abandoned that idea, but that's how it used to be. And the idea was that all that base energy goes to the subwoofers and it can handle it. And it has a couple of benefits. So a lot of people think of it as well, that little five and a half inch or six and a half inch or even eight inch woofer that your left center and right speaker has as the mid base, um, no longer has to reproduce 20 Hertz to 80 Hertz with any significant output, right? And that's true. And yes, it couldn't probably produce that loudly, but even if it could, even if you had, I don't know, 21 inch woofers in those speakers, the problem is most receivers just wouldn't have the power necessary to hit the levels that are needed because at those lower frequencies, you need to be hitting higher output. And so um, by, by, pulling it off and sending it to your subwoofer, you can have like a nice big high powered optimized for low frequencies amplifier that goes to that woofer and it can handle it fine. And then the receiver and its limited power supply is freed up for the rest of the speakers. So what you'll find is that if you do have full range speakers and you're running it off of even a pretty good receiver and you're running those full range and you watch movies at let's say reference levels, and then you, uh, um, high pass filter it, there we go, 
at 80 hertz, for instance, what you'll probably find is that it sounds like it can play louder and it's a little bit more at ease. And that's because, it, especially if you get it to the higher channel counts that some of these new receivers support at the higher end, their power supplies just can't keep up. They just don't, and, and even if the amplifier can do 150 watts, which really isn't enough in a scenario like this, the power supply can't do 13 times 150 watts with a loud movie. So you're better off base managing the speakers. But again, for getting the amplifier part, it's likely your speakers can't do it. So you want to base manage it because the amp really can't support it. That's built into your receiver and the speakers can't support it. Um, yes, you can add external amplifiers and that will help things. But then you still run into the problem of can the speakers handle it, which again, typically they cannot. Even if the speaker has a re response down to 20 hertz and you want to run them full range to 20 hertz, what exactly can they do down to 20 hertz? Can they do 115 dB? Probably not. I don't think so. And if you take, again, the amplifier you've put on that, how powerful an amplifier was it? Because if you think about it, to get a subwoofer to be able to hit 115 dB at 20 hertz, you're not doing that with two or 300 watts or four or 500 watts. It's probably going to need over a thousand watts. And so while that kind of output isn't necessary very often, again, you're straining a system more than is needed. So my recommendation is that of course you want to apply base management. I I actually don't find that going lower than 80 hertz is an, is a good idea or necessary very often. You could try it. I mean it can't it doesn't hurt to do that. It's just that 80 hertz has other benefits like it happens to fall within the range that's pretty close to the transition fre frequency or the fs of the room that goes between the the uh, discrete modal region and that overlap between the discrete modal region and the stochastic region and in a really well-treated room that's fairly large, it's another thing, where the frequencies are, where the, the modes are actually more stochastic, meaning they're on top of each other and it's more statistical zone, um, I might change my mind about this. If the speakers can handle it and the amplification is high enough, then yeah, okay, a lower crossover point probably makes sense on those speakers. How low, I don't know. Again, it would depend on a lot of factors, but... This is meant to be sort of more of an intro to base management. So for you, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Um, so I like 80 hertz. I actually think that's the right number. The reason why I would go higher than 80 hertz is a different issue. If you're using a lower end receiver that has very little amplification power to it, maybe it's rated at like 80 watts by two and I don't know, 65 watts uh, at, I don't know, 1% or 10% THD or something like that. That's not a lot of power. And if you're using rel relatively low end bookshelf speakers for all of your left, center, right, and surround speakers, probably that's going to have a hard time with the bass, especially if the woofers are smaller, five and a quarter inch or four inch or even three inch, anything that small, they're not going to do 80 Hertz at, at anywhere near even hundred dB. And so in those scenarios, my recommendation would be actually consider a higher crossover point. So you could go from 80 to hundred and see how that works. And if that doesn't seem to totally clear everything up, you might switch up to about 120. Now, I typically will do, if all the speakers are the same, I will use the same crossover points on all of the speakers. But the tops are often different from the rest of the speakers. So I will say that I often use a higher crossover point on the tops because they really need it. And so on those, I try not to go higher than 150 hertz because you don't want the bass to become localiz lo localizable. You don't want to be in a situation where the sound is being sent. Because remember, with Atmos now, the tops are getting full range, full bandwidth signals. So you don't want it to send a full range, full bandwidth signal to the top, have the base for it go to your subwoofer that's maybe like in the left front corner, and the top's up here, and then you can hear that distinct separation between the two. So the better approach to do is to keep the crossover lower so you can't localize it. But what I would do if the speaker just doesn't have the base output to keep up is to go with like 150 hertz. If it is localizable, then you're going to need to drop that down. Try 120. If that doesn't work, try 100. But understand you're losing dynamic range each time you do that. So base management is really important. You want to make sure you set that up. So even if you don't, if you do the automatic setup on most receivers, it automatically sets up the base management. But as many of you probably know, it doesn't always get it right. So the first thing you want to do is make sure when you're setting up your receiver that you've taken the time to check the settings and see that after you ran the setup, it did in fact put in place the base management. So I had a client one time who asked me to come over and calibrate their system. They told me the system had already been calibrated. When I went in to check it, however, everything was at the base level as if it was a new unit. 
What I found out was that somebody calibrated it using Dirac. They sent the Dirac file to it. They never turned it on. And if you don't turn on the Dirac file, Dirac doesn't take over base management. This was for the um, Dirac Live with base control. And so the this, this system, he had been operating it as if it had never been calibrated and base management wasn't on. So of course, once I came in, I was like a hero. The system was the best thing he'd ever heard. And of course, I did make a big, I, I checked it against the old settings. It was much better. But um, but it was more better than it should have been because this person had made a mistake. So it, you want to make sure that that's turned on. Now, if you don't do the automatic for some reason and you do it manually, you need to set the levels manually. You need to set the base management manually, et cetera. But let's just say you do the automatic mode. The next thing you have to do is go into it and see, did it set the speakers to small? Like I said, I like to base manage all the speakers regardless of how big they are. So it might detect that my left, in fact, interestingly enough, my in-wall speakers, the Perlison S7Is, um, they have a tiny, tiny enclosure. These things have no significant output below uh, 80 hertz. Here's the thing though, when you mount them on a baffle, like a baffle wall, and you measure them at a low frequent, a low output level, like 85 dB, they look like they have output down to 20 hertz. And so both the Trinov and uh, the Sony receiver, and I'm trying to remember what else I tried it. Oh, the Pioneer receiver using Dirac. All of those attempted to make my left, center, and right speakers full range. And the Trinov actually tried to equalize it flat to 20 hertz, which was crazy. Uh, Dirac did that too, actually, tried to equalize it flat to 20 hertz. And I remember measuring it and thinking, where the heck did it decide it can do that? And then realized it does look like it has output down to 20 hertz. But I guarantee you, and actually Eric from Trinoff told me, Eric from Trinoff from uh, Perlison told me, don't do that. Uh, if you actually turned it up like that, it would overload the woofers rather quickly. So yeah, with the baffle reinforcement and everything, you get output down to 20 hertz, but no, nothing significant. And you don't want to run it that way. So you have to override what the automated system did. And you have to change it over to a proper setting. In this case, for me, 80 hertz. Then after that, you do want to check and make sure that the frequency it set it for was right. So you want to make sure it's set to small. You want to make sure the frequency is right. So a lot of the automatic ones, what I found is that if there's weird acoustic problems in the room, your left speaker is set to, to large, your center speaker is set to small, your right speaker is set to large, the center speaker ends up with a, a crossover point of 40 hertz, the left and right surround speakers end up being made large too for some reason, but the rear surrounds, which are identical, are small set to 80 hertz, and the tops, it's like the top fronts are... I don't know, 110 hertz and the rear tops get set at 60 hertz. It's all, it's like bizarre stuff that doesn't make any sense. Well, you want to make them more equal. The only reason you want them to have different frequencies, as I mentioned, is if their low frequency output capabilities are different from each other significantly enough to affect output. And what I try to do is make it so that the left and right side surrounds and the rear side surrounds have roughly the same crossover points for the high pass filters on those. And I prefer them to be the same as the left, center, and right speaker if I can do it. But again, often our, our surround speakers are not as capable as our front. So you might have a higher crossover on those than on the fronts. To top them a little bit more open to going higher with only because we're often stuck with lower quality tops. But obviously the better solution in higher end systems is just to use a better quality top with more bass output. So that's base management 101. Hopefully that was helpful. And, uh, and remember, it's important to double check even if you did the automated setup, that it actually did something and is working. So keep watching the videos, keep asking questions, and I'll try to keep posting. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel. That actually helps me a lot too. So if you aren't subscribed, please do that. Thank you.